Hello YouTubers, so let's continue with the series here. Um, our first video was just an intro to the uh, theory of um, Entity Framework, and so it's time to get uh, our hands on some code. Um, the first part is going to be the model first, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Um, well, actually before we start doing model first, we actually need to get Entity Framework 5.0, which does not come included in the .NET Framework 4.5. Um, as you can see, I'm using Visual Studio 2012. If you don't have it yet, uh, just do a, a quick uh, Google search for um, Visual Studio 2012 Express. That'll work just fine. I'm using the professional version because I do for work, but um, you can use the Express just fine. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, uh, in order to get Entity Framework 5.0, you actually have to have a project, uh, and that project has to be, has to be saved already. So, um, model first. That's the name of our project. Solution, actually. Uh, so Entity Framework 5, model first. Let's go ahead and create a solution. And now that we have the solution, I'm actually, gonna ha I'm actually going to save it. Now that I have it saved, under reference, um, I'm going to use the uh, um, uh, the NuGet package. Visual Studio 2012 comes with it already. If you're using Visual Studio 2010, you may have to download NuGet. So, Entity Framework. And let's do a quick search for that. It's doing a search online. And the first return here is the 5.0. So, click Install. Accept the terms. And it's going to install Entity Framework 5.0. You can see that install because under references you have an entity um, framework uh, reference in there. And if you go to properties, actually it shows that it's version 5.0. So um, entity framework 4. Point something is included into the .NET 4.5. Um, right now we're not using any um, anything specific to 5.0, but I just wanted to get the latest release from Microsoft. This is a really, uh, the latest stable release. You can also get the alpha, uh, which is 6. Point something. But I just I'm going to use the uh, latest um, uh, stable release for Microsoft. All right, so we got Entity Framework 5.0, and we're good to go. So now uh, we have our main method here, but we have to add a model because we're doing model first. And uh, by the way, I just want to show you my SQL Server instance right here. I'm going to do a refresh, so no tricks or anything like that. As you can see, I don't have any uh, database in here besides the Report Server databases. Let me go ahead and minimize my Management Studio in there, and get back to my project. Um, so go ahead and add. Uh, you can't see, can you? Add new item. Okay, so just add new item. It's outside the scope of the, uh, of the screen there, but add new item. And under data in here, uh, click on the ADO um, entity data model. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it as uh, data. Um, I just change it. Uh, we're going to do an accounting system. Just because I use it as an example in the um, in the PowerPoint, so I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to use I'm just going to call it accounting system model. Okay, add, and we can either do database first or model first. So let's do an empty model in here. Finish it, and then the visual designer is going to come up here anytime, sometime soon. There's two ways to add an entity to your designer. You can right click and simply add a new entity. So let's do that right now. I'm going to call this invoice header and the um, I'm gonna be lazy here the property ID is going to be invoice header underscore ID and I'm gonna leave it as a in 32 I'm gonna add one property to it it's a, it's called the scalar property and that's going to be the total right click go to properties gonna open the properties window here um, and by default, every new property that you add to the entity is going to be a string. So you have to make sure that you change it to the appropriate type. Um, since this is a total, I want to change it to decimal. And I'm going to leave the rest as is. Okay, I'm not going to go in depth into into it. Uh, so now we have a, a invoice header. I'm going to add one more entity. And now instead of right clicking and adding an entity from here, I'm simply going to drag and drop from the toolbox. I'm going to name the entity invoice detail and this property right here I'm just going to uh, click once so I can edit or twice I'm not sure invoice detail underscore ID 
let's check the type. This is type 32 and identity, which if you're familiar with SQL Server means that it's going to create a new um, ID for you automatically. So let's just add a couple descriptions here. I don't know if we're going to use all of them, but uh, uh, let's add a couple properties. I don't know if we're going to use all of them. Uh, the first one is uh, description. So let's say we have invoice header, right, which is the summary of the invoice, and now we're adding invoice details, which is uh, all the items inside of, the, uh, inside of uh, invoice. So um, it's called this item description. It should probably be in some place else, but uh, this is not a, a full-blown application, right? We're just doing some tests. Uh, let's put quantity and price. Okay, let's leave it like that. But now we want to have these two entities uh, related. So at that point, I can simply right click and add new, and I can do a uh, navigation property in here. Well, actually, oh, association, that's what I want to do, not a navigation property. Okay, delete from model, right click, and add an association. That way, you got a nice wizard here. Okay. Um, sometimes they get it right. Sometimes not. Let me see. Over here, I have, I have one detail too many headers. That's not correct, right? What really what we want is for um, the invoice header. So each invoice header is going to have many details. So one invoice header to many details. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now you can see that he did a nice association for us. You have one to many and you have the navigation properties in here. So you have the uh, scalar properties, which are just uh, data points. And then you have the navigation, uh, the mapping between the two entities. So now that we have this, uh, I'm going to click Save. And it's just going to take a second here to save. Right click. Let me right click and I'm going to uh, um, generate database, uh, database from model. Actually, oh, you know one thing I want to do here? I want to change this. I want to change this long name right here, the accounting system model container, to just accounting system to accounting system container. Let's just make it a little sh shorter because we're gonna actually gonna reference that later on. So accounting system container. Let's do it like that. Um, again, save. I don't know my computer lags so much sometimes. Overwrite. So now we want to generate database from this model, and we're gonna create a new connection here. So now you want to point, you want to point this model to the actual server where you're going to host it. Um, I'm going to put my authentication here, and I'm going to give it a new name. Okay, I'm going to call this the accounting system database. Oh well, the accounting system doesn't exist, but uh, that's why you can't test it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and click OK here, and then it's going to ask me. The database accounting system does not exist, um, or you don't have permission to see it. Would you like to attempt to create it? And yes, let's go ahead and do that. So once again, when you look at the databases in here, refresh, you can see that I don't have an accounting system database in there. Um, I'm going to click OK in my Visual Studio, and it cannot do that. Ah, it's because I created earlier. Look at that. That's very interesting. So let's go to that path. Um, See if we can clean that up. I'm just I'm gonna leave it on the side here real quick. So now I'm gonna go to um, program files, Microsoft SQL Server. I'm gonna go to the eleven dot SQL Server instance and now data and look at that. I have them in here because earlier when I was doing some uh, trials um, I created actually that so if I had named something else I wouldn't run into that problem so let's see if that solved it I went ahead and delete it go ahead and click OK here it's gonna attempt to create I'm gonna say yes 
and it's asking me if I want to save it into the app config. I'm going to say yes, save the connection, the uh, username and password in the app config. So in here, um, the entity framework is, is generating all the scripts needed to create the tables, the database, and everything else, the associations in SQL Server. So you don't have to write uh, SQL scripts at this point. Um, I'm going to click OK, fin finish here. And now that I have the um, SQL script ready to go, all I have to do is uh, right click the SQL script and then click execute. So let me make sure that is inside. I'm going to click execute. It's going to ask me to log in. I'm going to click OK. And the query executed successfully. Command completed successfully. So let's go ahead and then bring the um, Management Studio up again. Um, I'm going to refresh this. Now you can see that we have an accounting system database in the SQL Server instance. And if we look at the tables, we have the two tables that we created in the model, the uh, invoice header and the invoice detail. And if we check the keys, we should have the navigation as well. You can see that the header table has only a primary key, but the detail one has two keys, a primary and a foreign key, uh, because of the relationship between the two tables. So that's great. So we're doing really well so far. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down. Um, actually, I'm just going to do one more thing here. I'm just going to create a query, accounting system, and from the stable, the headers, select all from headers, and we don't have anything. Select all from um, invoice detail, run both, and you can see that there are empty tables at this point. Very good. So we have our model, and actually in the Solution Explorer, we should actually take a look in here really quick. You can see that the Entity Framework did actually a lot of work for us, so let me go ahead and close this. Um, save this one more time, and then I'm going to click on the uh, main program here. We have a lot of files that were automatically generated for us, and if we take a look at the context file in here, um, We, um, when we uh, looked initially at the PowerPoint, Microsoft made some claims. Um, claim number one was that this was an object relational mapper. And so what's happening here is that the um, DB, uh, the context uh, file in here, is actually taking care of the, um, the relationship and also the, um, the domain specific objects. So now we have these two objects in here. One is the um, invoice detail DB set, uh, which is actually just down here. If we take a look at it, we can see that um, the header has two scalar properties how, as, as we created in there. And it has the navigation to the, um, to the invoice detail, has a collection of invoice details. Um, in here, we have a SQL file. And it's just the initial SQL file that we uh, created. Um, OK, so now that we have this, uh, this information in here, let's go ahead and use the entity inside the uh, string. And then this is, a, just keep in mind that this is just an intro to model first. Uh, we're not going to be doing extensive um, creating, reading, uh, removing, and updating of the database. Just a model first, really quick. So we're just going to insert a record inside a database. So the first thing that we're going to do here is use, uh, um, ta um, use the using statement. So then as soon as we're done uh, using the DB context, um, we're going to dispose to we're going to dispose of the resources. So accounting system con uh, container. So the accounting system container at this point, the the uh, the property that I renamed earlier um, has the reference and has the ability to access the database. As uh, let's go ahead and create one object in here. We're going to do uh, invoice header. Can it be new db dot db db dot invoice header? So that's the entity that we're looking for, and 